Now, if you're dealing with Sjogren's or if you suspect you might have an autoimmune condition, you have a family history of autoimmunity, this barrier breakdown is especially significant. There's actually a theory in autoimmune research called the epithelial barrier hypothesis. And this also comes up in the discussion of allergy and the development of allergy as well. It suggests that barrier dysfunction may be one of the earliest triggers in the development of autoimmune and atopic or allergic disease. So here's the sequence. First, your barriers become compromised, either due to genetic factors, environmental triggers, stress, diet, infections, combination of all of the above. Then antigens and bacterial products start crossing those barriers. Your immune system responds as it should with an inflammatory response. And over time, this chronic immune activation can break down immune tolerance or your body's ability to distinguish self from non-self. And once tolerance is lost or broken, autoimmunity can develop. This is why I get so frustrated when patients are told their symptoms are just stress or just aging or just perimenopause. Yes, stress plays a role. Yes, hormones play a role. But there are real, measurable, biological mechanisms that work here. And the good news is we can address them. So this brings us to the first R of the immune confident framework. Recognize. We can't calm the storm until we identify where your levees are leaking. So how do we do that? First, we get a really thorough clinical history. What are your symptoms? We look at your life experience. What are you experiencing? Are you having digestive issues, bloating, gas, irregular bowel movements, foods that you just can't tolerate anymore? Do you have chronic skin issues, eczema, rashes, psoriasis, hives? Do you have chronic sinus congestion or history of allergies? Do symptoms flare after eating a particular way or visiting a certain environment. These are all clues that barrier dysfunction might be a part of your picture. We also can look at some targeted lab testing. We might look for certain inflammatory markers that suggest systemic immune activation. Sometimes these can be subtle. It could be a mildly elevated level of your platelets, or we can see that you're having trouble absorbing vitamins like iron, low ferritin levels, vitamin D levels, which also can contribute to increased gut permeability. We also look for pattern recognition. And here's what I want you to understand. This isn't just about one lab value or one symptom. It's about looking at the pattern as a whole. When I work with a patient, I'm looking at the full picture, the timeline of when the symptom started, what triggers made them worse, or what things made them better, what other symptoms were affected. 